six from around the world by showcasing their professions, passions, and perspectives. I'm your host, Mathir Singh, a.k.a. The Net Man. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Ki Fateh. Penji Gurmeet Kaur Ji, welcome to the Net Nihangs Arena. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to talk to you today. <clears throat> um, a lot of my audience members are going to be familiar with some of your work. Um, and I'm hoping today to get a little more insight into everything. Like how you got interested in everything, why you were so passionate about this kind of work. What inspired you to write your books? And uh, what are your current projects? But before we begin with all that, uh, do you mind just giving us a little bit of background about yourself? You know, where you were born, how you grew up, and how you got to where you are today? Um, so I was born in a city called Kanpur, uh, which I don't have any connection to right now, unfortunately, uh, after 84. Uh, I was a couple months old, maybe a month old, when I was brought to Indore. Uh, that's in central India. You now, my parents and my grandparents hail from uh, West Punjab, which is Pakistan. Mm. Uh, my nanke, uh, my maternal grandparents are from uh, Jhelum district, uh, which is by the Jhelum River. And uh, the, my dadke are from Bannu region, which is um, a border of Pakistan and Afghanistan, so Khyber Pakhtun region, the current. So um, I guess I'm half Pathan and half Punjabi. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> so so my Punjabi is uh, has lots of flavors to it. Um, mm. uh, now I was I grew up in Indore um, until uh, 19 years, 20 years of age when I did my engineering there. Um, and then I uh, worked in India for about a year and a half uh, in technology. I did my engineering degree and then I moved to U.S. And uh, I did my master's in computer science at Utah State University in Utah, Logan, Utah. And um, uh, I got married. I have a son who was born in Logan, Utah. And then I moved to Florida. I uh, worked there for a year and a half, then moved to Atlanta, Georgia, where we lived for 26 years or so before, uh, or 25 years, I can't last count. And before I moved to Canada for the last three years, we are in Oakville, Canada. Oh, okay. And uh, so I have a son and a daughter, Angad Singh. He's, um, he works for Vice Media. He's a journalist. And yeah. my daughter is 11 years old, live for. And... Uh, a lot of people may know of her as a Punjabi, young Punjabi inspiring, <laughs> Punjabi language inspiring girl. And Angad yeah, Singh. I've seen, I've seen videos you've posted of her singing uh, Punjabi songs, like folk songs and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, very cute. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Angad Singh, you may have known from uh, yeah. his movies, One Light, Roots and Wings, and Exchanged. And now his work uh, with Vice Media, he covers... Um, people's movements in South Asia and uh, he's focused on Punjab and so he brings Punjab stories to the rest of the world. Yeah, I actually became familiar with him when he did the Times Square event. It, that video went viral where he was, he showed, he, time is the star. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, with the, there was that attack. With Angad Singh, um, it was interesting to see because I just thought, I didn't think much of it. I thought, oh, this is just a viral video. Here's a young, enthusiastic guy. But then I started to realize, oh, he's done other things. And he, then I saw he was with Vice. He was doing all of, um, he's an actual journalist. And this, and he this covered is the farmer's yeah. movement very well. Yes. He did three stories on farmer's movements that uh, uh, the world got to know because of his work about yeah. the movement. And, and uh, he's done a, uh, he did uh, actually after Indiana, Indiana, Indianapolis uh, stuff, uh, you know, the massacre. Yeah. He did, uh, yes. uh, he did program on that as well teaching people about the sick um, yeah. then uh, of course his movies in childhood they went all over the schools and uh, they were used as a curriculum to inculcate uh, dialogue on diversity in schools so. yeah actually i wasn't that familiar with that until we just spoke about it earlier 
before we started recording and uh you were mentioning that and i was wondering so um how old was he when he did these movies because he's still a pretty young man and so he's he was um uh, when 9 11 happened i think he was 11 11 years of age or no he was seven i think i oh, can't wow. remember but he started <laughs> making movies right after so he made one light which went um to many many schools and uh, film festivals around the world um when he was 11 and wow. uh it's basically he went and interviewed his neighbors and told him um told them about himself and learning from each other and educating them about Sikhi yeah. and uh, saying that there's one light in all of us and uh, discovering why people hate each other and why, why they stereotype instead of getting along. So, so he was just 11 then and then he made a movie called Roots and Wings, uh, which he interviewed Sikhs in a camp, in a Sikh camp and young Sikh uh, students in a camp and how they face issues, how they, um, how a challenge they are being raised as Americans and sex. And the idea was you don't have to cut off your roots in order to have your wings. So, uh -huh. so he made that, that went to many schools as well. And that's, uh, it has a lesson plan and it's still used as a, uh, to create a uh, dialogue on diversity and, you know, talk about students who may look different and feel different and how to, you know, how do they feel about being American and, uh, yeah. having their own identity at the same time and then um he also learned french well when he was in high school so he uh hosted four years in a row he hosted french students and um he made a movie called exchanged and by the way of which it's dual language movie in Fran french and english and by way of that movie he talks about he introduces the turban issue the turban ban in france Oh, and it's yeah. a beautiful movie and that was uh, now shown in schools in france so it educated the french about the turban so, so i'm assuming like all of this work that he was doing um at such a young age um you must have been helping him somehow <laughs> like you must have been helping him build the curriculums <laughs> or yeah he was market. he had school he was an athlete yeah. he was an honor student you know straight a student yeah. Um, he, uh, he got into Columbia University, which is an Ivy yeah. League school and in the fencing team and he played in the fencing team. So, so you can uh, imagine that uh, mommy was doing a, a lot of work for him. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, um, I was a single parent at that time. So mm. I, uh, we, we were a team, we were more like brothers and sister and like, you know, he was, I was yeah. doing all the, with the movie, I was, um, I didn't have the technical know-how. The first movie, I was holding the camera, but I was so bad at it. <laughs> um, but then I was sending the movies to the film festivals and to the schools right. and um, I helped create the, like uh, managing the website. And um, I, so he didn't have time to, like, you know, uh, I guess the reach out stuff I was doing. Right, right. Okay, and, very interesting. Uh, so yeah. then you mentioned that you had an engineering degree and you were working engineering when you came to the U S. Um, so I'm assuming you did that for a while, but what made you transition from doing the engineering into doing the work that you've been doing, writing children's books in Punjabi and, and, and working on all this Punjabi Punjab heritage type issues where, how did you make that transition and why? Um, so I guess necessity <laughs> is the mother of invention. <laughs> Um, I realized that there's not much work, uh, being done in Punjabi literature for children, um, <clears throat> from Angad Singh's time. So, uh, when I was teaching him Punjabi, I, re um, uh, I was bringing books from India. So mm. incidentally, um, I didn't speak Punjabi growing up. Um, I was, since I was brought up in central India, um, we kind of, my parents kind of didn't think about connecting us to our heritage as strongly as we feel now. Mm. So we switched to Hindi and um, uh, then I went to a uh, Angrezi school. So I learned Angrezi there, English yeah. there. So um, uh, the languages of communication were Hindi and English until I re 84 happened and we, we realized what our identity was. And I was a young mm. girl then, but still that struck that, uh, you know, uh, we are six and we are Punjabis. Mm. So, uh, like, you know, language sikhni shuru ki ti apni hi boli. And yeah. uh, when Angad Singh was born, unu sikhande sikhandeya, mein Punjabi sikhi. So that's, was, a, that's amazing. That really is amazing. I, you know, I, 
I'm sure a lot of my listeners would never have imagined that because I think we we know you as the lady that teaches Punjabi that is yeah. bringing you, but you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's kind of amazing to think you had to teach yourself mm-hmm. proper Punjabi mm-hmm. to, so that your son would learn it properly. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, that must have been pretty challenging, especially in the United States. I mean, this is the problem time, I have. Yeah. Like, you know, we're like, yeah. we, we get in the habit of speaking English. Everybody we talk to is always in, we're speaking in English and then you don't have the habit. We, um, and especially, you know, uh, going to the university here when you're surrounded uh, by uh, English speaking people. Now, see, I'm having a hard time speaking in English with you because I had to unlearn English. I had to unlearn Hindi in order to switch myself to Punjabi. I didn't speak English. If my daughter speaks to me in English, I get started irritated. I get started. Uh, I start getting irritated. Oh my gosh, I'm really forgetting English. Yeah. Uh, I, I was writing in English, you know, I uh, like yeah, I was a columnist at I am a columnist at sikshik.com and I'm published writer in English language. And yeah, the book the books I read are in in English and they're very good, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> so so yeah, I I had to literally Hindi that the horvi bura hala <laughs> the, the students I like, you know, went to uh, college with, you know, if I meet them after 20, 30 years, my classmates, I cannot speak to them in Hindi at all. We grew up speaking Hindi fluently. Now, another interesting thing I'll tell you is my parents, they were speaking to us in Hindi and my brothers and sister and I were speaking in Hindi all the time. So when I start, when I decided enough is enough, I'm switching to Punjabi. Because in order to for me to learn good Punjabi, I have to kind of you know just switch a button off of the for other languages. I um, started speaking to them in Punjabi. So for ten mm. years, the conversation went like Hindi here, Punjabi here. Ten <laughs> years, and then wow. eventually they switched to Punjabi. Wow! Because they they said this one is not giving up. <laughs> <laughs> they tested me. <laughs> I don't know subconsciously or consciously, but uh, about 10 years. So it started transitioning in the last, like, you know, seven to 10 years. And then after 10 years, I realized when I call them, they pick, they pick up the phone. It's Chased Punjabi. The conversations happen in Chased Punjabi. That's great. That's fantastic. Because that's, that's the concern I have as a parent. I, I want my kids to be better than I am. I want, you know, my wife and I, we want them to be better than we are. And we struggle with speaking Punjabi. We understand it just fine. You know, we grew up, actually, I only spoke Punjabi until kindergarten. My mom tells me that now. She's like, it was as soon as you started school, she goes, then you switched to English. And like, I never really switched back. You know, even a few times that we went to India, I would start to get a little more comfortable, start speaking a little bit. And then as soon as we would come back, here and go back to school it was switched back to english just out of habit or whatever it was and i never my tongue doesn't move very well for speaking punjabi and i I was mentioning to you earlier another difficulty i run into is um i run out of ways to say like i can't have a deep conversation on anything somebody wants to talk to me topically like you know how are you uh how many kids do you have you know i i can answer these kinds of questions simple conversation but if somebody said to me Hey, explain to me why it's a seller's market in real estate today and what's going to happen with the interest rates. I would be overwhelmed thinking, how am I going to translate all my English thoughts into mm-hmm. Punjabi and what words am I going to, I would be overwhelmed. So that difficulty, I don't want my kids to have that, right? So we, um, we, we're, we're encouraging that they take Punjabi classes, that they try to learn better Punjabi and it's difficult for us. So we, we do struggle with this. So we, um, we should talk about it in this program, I think, <clears throat> Yeah, as how to do it. I think that can be your focus because I've lived that mm-hmm. and I've uh, taught myself. So, it, and it's doable. And um, the, the trick to it is um, one is speaking, um, like speaking at home. So mm-hmm. no matter how many classes you're going to send your kids to for learning Punjabi, they're going to speak in Punjabi in that class. 
and they're going to learn some Punjabi and they're going to come back home and they're going to switch. They're going to go right back to 0.0. So right. it has to, the, the, you have to inculcate the environment inside the home. It's like, you know, when you learn any language, you have to submerse yourself. You have to immerse yourself. In. Okay. Uh, you learn better French by going to France. That's why we have exchange programs. Mm. Um, so my son, my son learned French in high school, four years. And then in college, all four years, he took French. Mm. But his Punjabi is better than his French. It's because I speak to him in Punjabi all the time. And he doesn't have anybody to speak to French, speak in French to. So mm. it's, you have to submerse yourself in, in the language. That's number one. And number two is reading. So mm. unless you read the literature in that language, your thoughts are not going to expand. So to see real estate, that is not going to explain it. Because to see real estate, you don't have to talk about it in Punjabi. Or you don't have to read anything in Punjabi. Mm. So if you read in that uh, so our kids, they're not able to express their thoughts in Punjabi here. Uh, from my research, teaching many kids is because they're not reading enough material. So to see, you will do a lot of work, 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 you will do a lot of work. But complex thoughts, how are you going to formulate them unless you have help? And then if you're ex exposed to literature, you are exposed to uh, stories, you know, yeah. uh, reading things. Uh, it's going to help you formulate your thoughts. In that. You know, that makes a lot of sense, actually, even in English. Okay, English being my main language. Mm -hmm. For me to be a great communicator in English, I have to read. Yes. I have to, I have to be reading. I'm reading newspaper articles, internet articles, um, reading books, um, you know, business guys talking about this is the mentality you have to have. And then... You learn that way of speaking, you learn that jargon, you learn that way of thinking, and it makes you a better communi communicator, even in English. So that makes a lot of sense. That's a big thing that's missing from a lot of our households, ours, and a lot of my friends. I know that they're not doing that. Some, some will say, okay, yeah, we'll make a point to speak Punjabi at home with the kids. But like you said, it's a limited conversation. How was your day? What's the weather like? You know, do you like this food? Do you want to eat this or not? So in order to get, be able to think those complex thoughts, you have to be reading mm -hmm. complex thoughts, things that challenge you. But you know, one frustration I have is um, <clears throat> like Punjabi newspapers. I get stuck. Like I, I can, I can read Gurbani and understand Gurbani better than I can a Punjabi newspaper. So like I'll get stuck, I'll be reading and I'll look on a word and I'll be like sitting there, sci -ci -ci science, that. And I'm thinking, what is this word? And then it clicks, oh, science. They're writing the English word mm. science in Punjabi. In Punjabi, yeah. Right, and then it, or international. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, I, I'll get stuck on it trying to figure out what kind of word is this? And then that, and it doesn't register, but it's like you said, there's not enough practice yeah. reading it all the time and recognizing those words where you don't have to sound it out and try to figure out what it means. You just see the word and recognize science, international, things yeah. like this. And those are uh, words that they have Punjabi <clears throat> substitutes, very easy ones to Vigyan and uh, Komantris and for international. And, uh, but that, they don't use them. They, they don't, they use, don't them. use them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing is like Punjabi boli da bot satyanash kare akbar jade ne they are news anchors, they are Punjabi very good. They are 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 very Yeah, so they're mixing Punjabi, they're missing Hindi and English, right? And, they, and yeah. then the sentence structures are different. And then if you're going to throw in a, a phrase, you're throwing in an object or a subject in English, mm -hmm. which goes in different order yep. in Punjabi. The whole sentence. So w what's happening is even the literature in Punjab, and that will that brings to why I decided to write these books, and mm -hmm. then we'll talk about why I did folk tales. So, um, so what a lot of people are doing is, uh, even if they're writing in Punjabi, they are thinking in English, and they are translating right. their thoughts in Punjabi, and then Vakbantar jadi hundi Punjabi, the muhavre Punjabi, they are using, they are. Uh, they are translating exactly the same th thing. So Punjabi da jada muhavra hai, odi oda thuk hai, o 
ਬਦਲਦਾ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਉਹਦਾ ਉਹ ਚੇਂਜ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਉਹਦਾ ਮੁਹਾਂਦਰਾ ਸੋ ਮੇਰੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬੱਚੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਚੰਗੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸਿੱਖਣ ਠੇਟ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਮੈਂ ਫੋਕ ਟੇਲਸ ਆਈ ਵੈਂਟ ਟੂ ਫੋਕ ਟੇਲਸ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਫੋਕ ਟੇਲਸ ਆਰ ਓਲਡਰ ਦੈਨ even older than way older than sikhi right as old right. as the language itself so punjabi language you know is uh, so fascinating and lots of uh, listeners won't have the information about it um when i go to camps and i talk to students uh, children and parents about punjabi language the importance of it i ask them the question how do old do you think punjabi language is and they, <laughs> right they think oh from guru angad and guru nanak you know time so yeah, because we confuse that years gurmukhi script guru angad dev ji with punjabi yeah, yeah. gave us yeah but that's that's just the gurmukhi script that's the, the language script. itself yeah. has been it's at least thousands of years prob- at least it is 5 years. to 7000 years oh, old okay. because yeah so it's a very old old language and it is not even a language it's a system of languages punjabi oh. i called it as a system like uh, because punjab okay what do you mean la- by that yeah so what i mean is that it's the land of five rivers site right? so if you see the expanse of those five rivers it's enormous the area it hmm. covers right all the way from sindh to um uh to like north is afghanistan borders to south to sindh to uh, satluj area at current day um, north himachal and then haryana right yeah. in the south and then malwa in the south all the way to rajasthan so it's a huge hmm. area so the language changed ਦੇ ਸੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਹਰ ਨੋ ਕੋ ਦੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਬਦਲਦੀ ਹੈ ਵਨ ਕੋ ਇਜ਼ ਲਾਈਕ 1.25 ਮਾਈਲਸ ਸੋ ਏਵਰੀ ਹੈਨ ਏਵਰੀ 12 ਮਾਈਲਸ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਚੇਂਜਸ ਸੋ ਸੋ देयर ਆਰ ਮੈਨੀ ਮੈਨੀ ਸਬ ਡਾਇਲੈਕਟਸ ਔਰ ਡਾਇਲੈਕਟਸ ਆਫ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਐਂਡ ਸਬ ਡਾਇਲੈਕਟਸ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਸੋ देयर ਆਰ 25 ਨੋਨ ਔਰ ਅਰਾਊਂਡ 25 ਨੋਨ ਮੇਜਰ ਡਾਇਲੈਕਟਸ ਇਨ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ Wow. and uh, even in east punjab after sp- being split where there are four major dialects in east punjab Mal- malvi majhi doabi and puadi and mm. of course north which kangri wagera vi hai jinnon nu pahadi jehdi ki hun oh himachal wale apni language bolde ho punjabi de naal identify nahi karde ho pahadi nu apni language different language karde par hai te ho panch rivers te expands which expands which na because these are the five rivers that feed himachal and him haryana and punjab and over there in pakistan the east uh, the uh, west punjab so that is all so i call it as a system of language with system of many dialects yeah and one dialect can be so different from another that you would have hard time conversing so oh, wow. so punjabi is very rich language and uh, so panch to 7000 purani now folk tales that's why i document folk tales is because they've been passed on for generation to generation and ohna di jehdi boli hai oh theet punjabi hai oh di waak bantar hai oh purani hai te dooji gall hai ki these are so uplifting and uniting that uh, they talk about nature a lot and they talk about um, in our folk tales they are unique uh, they are compared to the other folk tales from other cultures because in our folk tales uh, you've read uh, my books right Yeah, the, the tree talks to the fire talks to the right. bird talks to the human beings and so on so yeah. forth so yeah. every element in nature and converses with each other and they have a place in in life and um, the the sabak jede sabak hage ohna to nikalde ne jede ki qadra qeemta the lessons the mor- morality they teach is is the same morality we learn from gurbani basically so this is these are the founding principles that like you know that our civilization is based on love and understanding and respect of each other and and courage and patience and persistence and you see all of these stories teach a lesson and um, without telling them that you know giving them religious that this is a religious education they are getting right. that those same very same principles and and just fun way yeah, and mean, the same are, language in the fun way Yeah these are essentially fables right like cuz you have an- animals are uh teaching us human lessons mm-hmm. right yep. and this is this is a style that's been even in western thought that's how things were taught yep. you learn morality you learned human nature um Aesop, Aesop, Aesop's fables, Aesop's, Aesop's yeah. fables yeah. yeah actually my my brother Monpal he wrote a book recently it's an english it's a fable about it's called Poe the cat 
And uh, he, he just published it a couple of years ago. And I, I think it's available on Amazon and everywhere. But he did try to do the same thing, just teaching certain value system through these animals and how they're interacting with each other. And it, it really is amazing because now we have a different perspective because we didn't grow up seeing all these animals. We see them on TV and you have documentaries, you watch monkeys and how they behave. And then you, you're in awe how human-like they are how they build relationships or how a monkey is greedy and the monkey is yeah. getting everything it can't, even though it can't hold everything, it tries to just keep taking it because it doesn't want to yeah. miss, you know? So those, those examples, they teach us about how human mm -hmm. beings think and behave and why it's not good. And you mm -hmm. learn innocently. But I think the more powerful thing, like you're mentioning is you, you're learning the language in its purest form. Because and, they're des they're designed that way, and they stick to you. They stick to the child. Mm. So um, this one, the first fable I have in my folktale books, mm. the Chirite Pippal. Yeah, um, I heard it from my grandmother, mm. and then when Angit Singh was born, I used to tell him this. He was a very um, uh, he used to give me a hard time eating. He was a very poor eater. Okay. So, but when I would tell him this Chirite Pippal, uh. He, he was so fascinated, he would open his mouth and then I would put <laughs> burki <laughs> in his mouth and he would eat. And, yeah. uh, and then what happened is he would only eat when I would tell him stories. Right. And I remember like uh, he was uh, five, until five or six that I was just sitting on this chair, telling him stories and feeding yeah. him. And that's how I raised him. And then what happened is uh, uh, Liv Kaur was born and what happened? I heard Angad Singh tell him the same stories I used oh. to tell him. <laughs> and I was awed because they have a, quite a gap in between their age gap. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was like, he remembered? Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, these need to be documented because they stick. Uh -huh. And if a kid born in USA who's surrounded by English, he remembered this tale. Then, you know, right. other kids. So I... Um, I said, like, you know, and also Liv's baby Shar. I got all these English books and her nursery yeah. was full of English books, even though half the people or more, more than half the people invited were Punjabis. Right. And I was like, really sad. Yeah, because that's, like, that's all that's available. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, why doesn't she have beautiful Punjabi language books in her nursery? Yeah. And I, um, I started looking everywhere around the world. It's like, oh. Sikhs have been living in, or Punjabis have been living in the diaspora for so many years. Yeah. They would have created these beautiful board books in Punjabi language. I'm, I'm looking and I don't find, I find Kaida. One yeah. wonderful yeah. lady had done a Kaida in board yeah. um, from New York. Uh, her name is Gagan. And uh, so I found a Kaida, but I didn't find anything beyond Kaida. And then, uh, so I looked in England and Australia and Canada, wherever the Sikhs live. And that and India to the Punjab to the like on the Sigi Kitaba Angad Singh the Paya Sigi Amper Punjab to Jiria Kitaba, the ones we bring from sorry, I switch to Punjabi. It's once okay. I bring it's from okay. uh, Punjab, they are they don't appeal to our kids here because the um, they're written by grown ups uh, for children, but not really thinking about children. So the content right. is um. Are tough for our children to relate. Number one and number two, they are not very well illustrated because right. it's very right. expensive to make children's books and good quality books. Right. And number three, their uh, language is uh, kind of tough for our our children. Also, a lot of Punjabis getting Hindiized. So, ethon asi jada apne bachya the naal Punjabi vich gal karna they they don't see those very difficult. They don't hear those very difficult Sanskrit language based words. Apart from what's in Gurbani, yes, Gurbani, which yeah. Sanskrit language they based what Sari loves ne. But Jedi Am Bolchal, which is Jedi Punjabi, those are not very heavily laden with Hindi or Sanskrit, Sanskritized Punjabi or Hindi. So our kids find those books very difficult to read. I see. So Eskar ke menu lagya ki Jedi Jedi Lok Kathama ne Jedi Am Ariam Sadi Am Bata kende hai Punjabi, which folk tales are called Bata. Which needs to be preserved and those tales need to be preserved because they are, the tales are themselves dying. So there's multiple angles working here. So yeah. I decided to document first that story that Angad Singh was telling Levkor. Yeah. And I 
it eventually was actually uh, incidentally was Angit's friend uh, who painted it for me. Oh, uh, okay. His classmate. Uh, Susanna oh. Dong and she happened to be our first board book illustrator because she did an amazing job a Chinese American girl so she was at, yeah. in high school at the moment and uh, so she painted it and I made a prototype a board book and I got it printed in US and I got uh, five copies printed yeah and um, so it was for Livcor and then there was uh, other young mothers uh, who had children and I gave them as presents those books yeah. And they were like, oh, they're like, this is the best present that we got. Yeah. We, can, we have a book, we can tell Punjabi story to our kids. For me, make more of them, make more of yeah. them. And that's where the whole project started. It's like yeah, there's then, a hunger. Yeah. So how did you fund all of this? Or how are you funding this? Just out of your own pocket? Or did you start some kind of, did you ask to, you know, somebody to help or how did you do So, um, at first I was, uh, not very connected, you know, I was connected uh, because of Angad Singh's films. I was like, you know, two people and stuff like that. And through all my connections were his connections and through okay. his, uh, I, uh, connected with, uh, uh Virji in California and Irvair Singh who, uh, my Punjabi wasn't that great, uh, at that time, even though I was learning, he was my editor. He was my first editor and he's still my Punjabi editor to, to date okay. all just one thing Kalra books he edits my books proves them and um, um, we did uh, so I put in my this one so uh, this you know there's an interesting story so the first project called cost twenty thousand dollars so say so like you know uh, you know the fable of Gurnana we rupee da sacha sauda yeah, uh, we rupee da sacha sauda yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I a set of three books, board books. I made 3,000 copies. Oh. Leap of faith, total leap of faith. Then I yeah. copies of board books. Yeah. Then I uh, prepared a lot of work for So that's 9,000 books yeah. uh, right away. And board yeah. books, very expensive. expensive and, right. uh, and, but you know, they, they sold in four years. So when that yeah, money came I mean, back. The quality was there, right? I mean, the you had the quality, the, the cover is quality, the size, you know, the, the illustration. Everything was so researched, the, you know, or the foot, uh, footprint or the, uh, it's written in Dr. Seuss style, you know, Re yeah, repetition yeah. and rhyme, which yep. kids can retain. And then I enriched those fables so that they get uh, Punjab and they get to know a lot about Punjab, about their land. Mm. So flora and fauna from Punjab, the trees from Punjab, and then right. artifacts from Punjab, you know, that they're learning. So I'm like enriching them. Even the language I'm enri enriching. So they learn a lot of vocabulary words. So if they have all these five books, that's, that was my idea. It's if they had just these five board books, you know, they should learn so much uh, vocabulary out of it that they have. Like, oh, nanu, appa kende na, jida dodanu jag lagande na. Right. Uh, we, we we put the jagnu ki kende English English which um, the uh, yeah, what, what, culture culture yeah so culture. you put the culture in the milk to make yogurt so so I I wanted this to be the culture that you put in kids and then they they have this love love for the Punjabi language or love for reading Punjabi otherwise if they've never held a book in Punjabi language and a and a beautiful book at that. And right. a book that connects them and inspires them to read Punjabi. They're not never going to read Punjabi. Yeah, I mean, I think that's another thing, too. It's a great point because the books that you're getting in America, the children's books here, they have a certain quality to them. You put them on your bookshelf. There's a presentation. Sometimes the books that are coming from India, though, they're that old newspaper type yeah. paper print. And it's a soft cover and it's a small thing. And, you know, and it's easy to get uh, lost or torn or, you know, those kinds of things. Is, so now you're producing a product that matches the quality of what they already have mm -hmm. on their bookshelves, what they already have at school. Now it's a lot more attractive. I, that's one thing, just in this discussion alone, you already opened my eyes to not only do I need to be reading more things in Punjabi, books in Punjabi, but I want my kids to start reading in Punjabi now <laughs> mm -hmm. while they have the chance for, like you said, if you're putting that culture into the milk, to, you're going to make they, <laughs> you got to, you got to start now. And so that as they get older, they'll be able to formulate more complicated thoughts and have a bigger vocabulary. 
and also by giving those books uh, that come from Punjab in their hands, you're sending a message to them that your language is inferior somehow. Because mm. in one hand, they're holding this low quality book that can be disposed of, you know, very easily. Yeah. And on one hand, they have this English language book, which is so beautiful and so rich and so expensive. So you, there's a subtle message going into their mind. It's like, you know, yeah, this is a yeah, sub disposable throwaway, second yeah. class. And that's what I didn't want to do. I wanted to give in their hands a book with the same quality or better. And right. so it puts Punjabi at that pedestal, that it is superior than English, not yeah. lower than English for them. So um, that, that's why, yeah, did the, the yeah, books. And we the know too, like even in India, I mean, even you can go back to Arya Samaji movement starting and Singh Sabha movement, you know, the effort. <laughs> to um, make Hindi the predominant language, to let, let go of Punjabi, let go of being sick. And, you know, you have all these efforts happening socially. They're happening um, by the government. They're happening politically. You know, you're, you're having all these aspects over a hundred years of an effort. <laughs> and to, money put into it. So, lots of money, yeah. You know, I saw the change myself because I go to Punjab. Uh, whenever I go to India, I spend a lot of time in Punjab and in villages too. And I noticed that um, uh, the the people I used to visit, um, my friends and relatives, they were reading the Ajit newspaper and long, mm. way long back, Punjabi, which yeah. the next time I went, they were uh, Jagran, Danik Jagran, Hindi. Mm. And I was, uh, I think that was it, Danik Jagran. And I was astonished. It's like, why are you reading Amritsar, which, why are you reading Hindi yeah. newspaper? I, I was so mad and they were like, uh, my cousin's wife, she looked at me, uh, she said, you're right, but let me bring you the Ajit, my father-in-law still reads Ajit, and she brought Ajit and she says, compare the quality. The quality. And the, compare the price. Mm, the, oh. the Hindi newspaper was half the price, it had colored uh, inside yeah. thing and it has the content was amazing uh, right they, they they are putting money into it and that's why yeah. it's mass uh, initially you have to put money Initi nothing yeah. comes becomes mass uh, yeah. so my books you know i had to put in money right yeah. first and you know i was sitting on it for four years there was no recollection there was no collecting money you know there was yeah it was hard work and then i'm doing i had to leave my job for it so these books are were not twenty thousand they are two hundred thousand a year <laughs> right, right. So, when you put everything in, yeah. I put my, I quit my job for doing yeah. this. So, so uh, everything requires a lot of financial time and right. commitment. So, if we need to revive things, you know, we need to put ourselves in it, and uh, just not the money. It's right now. It's I've put my life into it, yeah. And that's changed things. I that's changed things. Um, at the time, seventy five thousand copies of my book. Uh, different books are in floating around the world. Yeah, yeah. And it may have connected so many children to Punjabi language. Every day, Virji, I get... Yesterday, I got two two videos. Hmm. Uh, one from a girl in Germany who's of Pakistani origin who speaks German with her parents and then some Urdu, Punjabi, that they, like, yeah. there wouldn't have been any scope, any chance. But she's reading my books in Punjabi. Wow. And I got that video. And then I got a video a bit day before that of a Hindu girl in Delhi whose uncle gifted him my Sanja Punjab edition because my books have now been printed in Punjab as well, Punjab edition. And uh, she, who's addicted to cell phones now, uh, reads, this is the <laughs> only book she asks her uncle, to, uh, uh, her uncle to read the story every night to. Yeah. And now she's speaking Punjabi because of that. So it is the difference that those books and this guy, he was like, uh, there's something in your books. And I said, there is soul. Yeah. There is soul in my books. Yeah. You know, another interesting thing, Punjabi itself might be the easiest language in the world to read because you have every letter makes that sound. It, you know, and so that's all you have to know. So it's so easy to, it, maybe in two weeks, you could memorize the sound of every letter 
Gurmukhi and start, so yeah, start reading it. it. It's yeah. so easy to start reading. And that's reading one thing I would really encourage people, people that haven't started learning yet how to read, start with that because you'll find out that, you, don't, you know, French has, German has rules. You know, if you want to speak Mandarin or Cantonese, I mean, it's, those things get very complicated when you're trying to read and pronounce. Read. But with Punjabi, you can, it forces you to pronounce things correctly. I, I, often I'll see even even when I was reading. Um, we'll, we'll, we should start talking about this. Um, Valiant, just one thing, Kalidara's book, the on his life. Um, there were some words that you wrote in English that I don't because you're talking about a certain place or something. So I have to look and see how is it spelled in Punjabi to know how to pronounce it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so th that's the one thing about uh, Punjabi language is it forces you to pronounce it correctly because those letters just make those sounds. So if you make the sounds correctly, then you will, you will be speaking properly. So why don't we, why don't we get into this a little bit? Um, the valiant uh, in Punjabi is Madjivara, correct? Mm -hmm. um, this book um, is about the life of uh, Jaswant Singh Kalra, who was a, um, activist who famously disappeared um, as he was researching all the people that were being disappeared by the Punjab police. Um, it's, it's really a good book. I mean, first of all, you wrote it in a way, that, and I'm reading it in English. The English version is written in a way that uh, anybody can read. Like I, I could have my um, kids start reading it and they'll, they'll be able to follow. Um, the other thing that I really loved how you did this is you cover so many important points in Sikh history, modern Sikh history. You, you're able, to, and, it, and it builds that timeline of why, uh, by just one Singh's character and why his passion was there when you see the timeline of his grandfather and, um, and then his father, and then you see what's happening in India with the partition, and then uh, seventy-eight Vasaki incident, and how you know, and what's happening. Indira Gandhi declares emergency power. Like the whole timeline building up, it it you get so much insight into why he thought the way he thought, why this work was so important, and what was influencing him. And you get this amazing history lesson <laughs> mm -hmm. along with it. Uh, I'm sure that was all intentional, obviously, but how did you even think to put the story in this way to relate it so, so much with all this history? Because now I can see if I have my son read this book, um, he's going to wonder, hey, what was, what's this boat from Japan? The Komagata Maru? Let me, let me go find out more about this. Like everything is touched on enough that you get the idea. But mm -hmm. it'll spark the desire to, mm -hmm. I should, I want to read more. What happened? What happened in 1978? What happened in 1947? It, how did you even think to do that? Um, so I would say Guru Kirpa. Mm. That's the only word I can put. Um, so, you know, uh, since the Kalsana days, right? And since yeah. 1984, when I was a young girl back in India, um, I'd always thought we, um, we haven't been able to, and then since a mother, I became a mother and then my children growing up, uh, why hasn't there been a book about us in the recent past? We learn about the Sikh at the house quite a bit, uh, like, uh, tell our Shaheeds, you know, we know about Paitaru Singh, like Singh. Shabazz Singh, and then we know mm. about a little bit about Maharaj Ranjit Singh, we know about Baba Banda Singh. Mother. But where are our 20th century say, uh, history and martyrs and uh, what happened with us? You know, my parents faced 1947, and, uh, or my grandparents, and then uh, also 1984. And then, uh, so how, how, how should we tell about our children about all of this? Right. And uh, there's not been uh, one book about 84 for children and mm. it was such an important event that we should relate to next generation so where do they go to find information they go to 
uh, Wikipedia or they right. go to places where they may get wrong information about it right. or from someone else's mouth, states right. propaganda. So, so why isn't there a good book about all these events? And uh, so that, that thought was in my background, in my working in my mind for a long time. Mm. Um, and two years ago, when Bibi Paramjit Kaur Khalda, she mm. contested in elections in Punjab. Yeah, this, is, this is the wife of Jaswant Singh Wife of Jaswant Singh Khalda. And, you know, we've been familiar with Jaswant Singh Khalda's work yeah. since Khalsana days. And um, we know about him. A little bit. We know about his human rights part and activism right. part and the disappearance part, and everybody knows him. A lot of people say, We know about him. We don't need to pick up the book and read it. But oh, they no, don't... people would be so very surprised if you yeah. actually read. Yeah. Right. So, what happened is uh, when the BB Paramjit Kaur Khalada was contesting the elections, uh, I got an opportunity via a friend to con campaign for her. Okay. So, you know, make some material, like send it to Punjab and so on and so forth. And I was doing some more research and making material about him, editing an article on him, I realized there is more to his life than we know, and we should know, we must know. And because him as a person is an amazing human being, amazing guru Sikh that everybody needs to be inspired and learn, uh, learning from. So I, I told my friend who was organizing the campaign is, this article doesn't do justice. There should be a book on him. And uh, she's right. Uh, she said, she, you're right. There should be a book on him. Uh, and then she's like, who's going to write it though? And then she started <laughs> laughing. And I said, no, 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 no. You don't mean me. I have my plate full, you know. <laughs> I have so much work going on. I can't keep up with, you know, I'm self-publishing my books. I'm marketing right, them. Right. I have to package them and ship them sometimes, right. you know, most of the time myself and uh, from concept to getting them illustrated to English and Punjabi and I mean, there's so much work so she's like but imagine who can tell stories like you do whose books do children love to read who can tell do justice to this great hero of ours and right. she just I said okay I'll think about it I'm not saying <laughs> no I'll think. but she kept pounding at me she's like yeah. No, you need, to, you need to do this. You need to do this. And then one day she connected me to his daughter and said, just talk to her and you don't have to say yes or no. Just talk to her. She wants to talk to you. And then when I picked up the, when I talked to his daughter, um, she's like, I, th I heard you guys are exploring about writing about my father. Right. And at that time I could have, I couldn't have said no. You know, I was <laughs> like, I was like, yes. And I was like literally crying. I was like, Guru is giving me this daat. Mm. Here is his family who's hap happy for me to write the book and they say, they think I am the best person to do it. Am I a stupid person to say, I'm a, you know, an yeah, ungrateful yeah. person to say no? Yeah. So I said, yes, I will do that. I'm going to put all my uh, projects aside. In fact, the book I was working on uh, when I got this project in my choli, in my uh, yeah. in my, you know, uh, this is a good word for Choli. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, when it, it just, that you, now this some, project is yours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in my arms, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, that, that book I was writing, is still not done. I'm working on it now mm. because, uh, because Put this project overwhelmed me and took me yeah. over and, you know, I just, it had, it was a mind shift because I'm, Doing this Churita people and Sapta Punkara and you know all these yeah. stories and now I have to write history, and history is not my, um, it's not my forte. It's not my strong point at all. Hmm. What is is story storytelling? So what you see is there is um, is a story, but it's told in a way that uh, children can relate to it. Children can. Uh, they're excited about reading and they uh, they just love reading it and then yeah. in the background the historical events are playing and they are not just disconnected with just one thing called Ra's life they're all connected with his life so now what you're seeing is how he was seeing Punjab how his family was seeing Punjab so yeah. it is uh, it becomes a story of a typical Punjabi household living on the border it's not only his he's not the only Shaheed right 
There right. are many, many who were disappeared. And there were many, many whose grandparents fought for the freedom of India like his grand grandfather did. Right. So it becomes a story of a typical Punjabi family who gave all for first for India and then for then for Punjab fighting for their rights against India. So um so it it's become I think it's become a very important work. And it's not only for children. I wrote it for children twelve plus, but uh in, oh, it's definitely farmers, not just yeah. for children. I don't want people to get, yeah. uh, I'm telling you, like, um, it was very impactful for me too. Cause here's the thing. Like we talked about Khalsa net and K net, you know, back mm -hmm. in the day. Um, I remember, um, very vividly following everything he was doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'd gone to, um, uh, the computer center and I was sitting there doing all my emails and stuff, log, you know, log in and see what's happening on. Knet and the news came that he was he was picked up while washing his car mm -hmm. or his van or something. You know, the, the van, a van came and picked him up while he was washing his car. Washing his yeah, and uh, I was like, oh my god! Like I could like we had heard the stories of people being disappeared, and then you know people challenge, oh is, these are exaggerated, are they exaggerated? And that was actually one thing that up by just one thing was really good about is he wanted accurate numbers because he knew yes. it was discrediting the effort when people were exaggerating numbers but to then he had just spoken in canada um you know it, it, we're it's happening right in front of our eyes we are eyewitness mm -hmm. account uh, we're watching it happen mm -hmm. exactly what he is um exposing is happening mm -hmm. we watched it happen to him and it was shocking because I'm sitting in America. In America, these things, yeah. they don't happen, especially if you're so publicly known. visible. Yeah. yeah, so known and, and visible that they wouldn't even dare to do it. It showed that uh, things work different in Punjab, that nobody's afraid of anything. Yeah. They'll, they do exactly what they want, when they want, and they send their message. They don't care. And I remember sitting there shocked, like, could not believe it that happened right in front of our eyes and reading the book kind of you know re reminded me of all of that i started thinking back i'm like yeah you know um there's certain people they get tasked mm -hmm. to something right and he was definitely tasked to carry that story forward to the rest of the world and that was, yeah, his was amazing work amazing work because he was what he was doing actually for people that aren't aware um he was documenting the cases of the people that were disappeared by the Punjab police and the way he did it. And Benji, maybe you could probably explain this better, but the way he did it is he actually got some kind of breakthrough mm -hmm. because he was going to um, the, crematorium. the crematoriums and getting the logs of who was cremated, how much firewood are they ordering? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that they could kind of figure out how many bodies are being processed. And it took somebody opening the books these are books aren't publicly available they weren't public they were hiding yeah. them but they he went them. through some channels to get to the records of the woods that uh, to burn so yeah. that required documenting who the wood was being issued against and the police was not careful and they document they put the names and their father's name and the village name just to get the wood issued from the municipality and but the crematoria itself didn't have the records, the, the municipality, the wood issuing. I see. So he went through those records to find who was cremated in the wow. crematoria. And he and had documented some 25,000 cases. He asked, uh, so this is estimated. the that uh, everybody should know, uh, the, be clear about that he documented close to 3,000 names. Okay, and he got yeah. the doc documents of the 3,000 in three, in just three crematoria of. Uh, uh, in Tarn, Tarn, Patti, and uh, Amritsar. Yes, yeah, so uh, so, and there are literally hundreds of crematoriums. Hundreds, thousands. Yeah, but this is just and three. Just three. He got three thousand. Yeah, yeah, just three thousand. So he he calculated, he estimated, and they were over a period. So he estimated over the period of through eighty four through ninety uh, uh, ninety four or ninety five. Uh, Huh. is how many people were disappeared by the police and he came to a number close to 25,000 and uh, so that the 25,000 was an 
he said it was an underestimation hmm. so the number could be way more and based on the numbers that he had the records he had found yeah so uh, his work is very important and as you read in the book he insisted on um documenting because he says the it's not credible to the world unless if we document and inspired by him there are the jathibandis that i talk about the organizations i talk about in the book they are doing continuing his work like yeah. insaf is one of them in the us yeah 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 no um the other the other thing that i really enjoyed about how how you wrote this book is <clears throat> the storytelling aspect um you can vividly imagine these characters like i can imagine him with his father going through the fields i can imagine sitting you know like how you describe they're sitting and um at night and they got the lantern on and they're telling the stories like very very vivid <clears throat> i mean so a lot a of the, a lot of things that. are based on uh family interviews and mm. uh, I got stories from the family, so worked very closely with his family to work this book out. And uh, it was a very uh, beautiful thing. Bibi Paramjit Kaur Khalada, when she read the first prototype, it was finished, pretty much finished. Yeah. And when she read it, she said that uh, it was as if I was writing the story. Mm. She said I wouldn't have written it any differently. Yes. Yeah. So it is the family's account. And uh, how did you like the illustrations? Oh, excellent! Uh, the it's like these are watercolors. I think something like yeah, right? Water watercolor. So They're excellent it, and, and consistent. Like the, you can, I you could just show me the picture on the internet, and I'll be like, that's from the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the illustrations is another story. Three of us, Navkiran. Uh, yeah. Just one single daughter. daughter, myself, and um, the illustrator inquisitive Amandeep Singh from England. Is hmm. very sought out after in, uh, very yeah, popular in inquisitor. Yeah, yeah, it's I N K. K. -E yeah, yeah. He um he's amazing. He um uh, but he was very busy. He's very sought after. So getting his time and getting him to do things. Uh, Navkiran and I had to do a lot of research and pretty much I had hmm. to pretty much draw like you know the skeletons. I'm hmm. not a good artist and just. Give the ideas to him, and he was great at executing them and beautifully brought yeah. them out. Just lovely. Yeah. And you wouldn't believe the details we have. Uh, actually, there are artifacts from his life, like for example, that uh, where um, just one thing, father's father, father Bapu Kartar Singh is uh, telling the story of his father uh, yeah. to the kids. The letter is actually the letter he got from Shanghai. Yeah, he brings the letters out. Yeah, yeah. From, yeah. The, it is actually the copy of that letter with a stamp and everything. The sanduk behind that cupboard thing behind yep. is the actually their sanduk from oh, their home, okay. and the tree outside their home is exactly the tree they have the pink flowers. Oh. So what we have tried to do is preserve just one thing, Kalada's life through illustrations, letters. His handwritten letters are in the book. And yeah. then we have also the newspaper coverage from around the world at that time. What right. was Amnesty International <clears throat> saying? What was Times saying? And, you know, yeah. uh, so what were these big prominent authors in the world were saying about all these uh, events right. like 1984 and so on. So we have all of that also incorporated into the book. So, so when somebody is reading, they know the world perspective of it too, as well as, so it's not. And what I tell people that it is not... Um, state's perspective or it's not Khalistani perspective it's the people's right. perspective this book so yeah I think that was also the key thing as you're telling this story um you don't get uh, political you you stay that this is uh about the people this is the mm -hmm. people that are living there they're really has nothing to do with what religion they are or what political party they're associated mm -hmm. with or anything like that and we were fortunate that we were able to tell this story through just one thing Khalra's eyes because he uh, he was that person that he loved Hindus and he loved Muslims and he loved right. Sikhs and he um, he he worked for the he believed in the confederate uh, confederate structure in the in bringing Pakistan and the Punjab to two Punjabs together the yeah. kind of thing that we are awakening up to now mm. you know so he was yeah. working on that at that time so it's it's amazing the way he thought he was so 
um, his vision was just so farsighted, you know. He thought of so many beautiful, wonderful things. I was a human being at first. He fought for the rights of the downtrodden, the the Dalits, you know, the Maz, uh, Mazdur, you know, the workers, you know, the yeah. fields and so on. Yeah. Before he worked for the Sikh issues or the uh, rights of the Sikhs. I wouldn't say he was fighting for the Sikh rights. He was fighting for human rights. You know, that's why he's a right. human rights activist known as a human rights. Yeah. So, um, so that's very important for our children to know, or our future gen generation. Like living in U.S., they all know about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Right. You know, everybody's their stories and their books at their homes, and they get inspired by his speech. And and just once in Colorado has this wonderful speech. You know, the the yeah, the lamp. The, yeah, the lamp challenging the darkness. You know, and, and yeah, and that is that is actually you're right. That's on par with the things that we hear other mm -hmm. great speakers like Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Or, he was a great speaker and he was uh, about the same age mm. when 43 mm. uh, uh, and when he and he knew like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that his death was calling knocking upon his doors and yet yeah. he looked straight straight into the eye yeah. and so there were so many similarities and I want our kids to be inspired by our heroes you know so so it was um, I think this is the work of my lifetime. I don't know yeah. if I can do better than that. <laughs> I put no, in I'm a sure lot of yeah. Yeah, no. It, listen, life into I, it. I, I, the way I see it is, you're already putting material out there that's helping people. The the Punjabi folk tales, that's a tremendous effort in it, in and of itself. Um, the Jaswant Singh Kalra book is awesome. Um, and, and, and it's going to do exactly what you're saying. Like my children are going to read the book and they're going to learn about him. We're going to have to make sure that we point out that he's as important as the people they're learning about in school, or if not more for us. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, so I, I have full faith that whatever project comes your way, if you're putting that kind of time and dedication that you've done on these previous projects, whatever these projects are that are coming, I'm sure that they're going to be uh, as successful, if not better. As a matter of fact, you are working on other like right now. Um, what's the 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 Punjab heritage? What is what is the of the next book? Oh, yeah, no, no, uh, no, the the organization that you had my notes here somewhere. Pipple oh, partnership Pipple? in promoting yeah. Punjabi. Yeah, Pipple. Uh, so Pipple is the nonprofit um, uh, organization uh, that I um, founded. Um, so, uh, whatever proceeds from the books we get in the diaspora, they yeah. go back into Punjab. So they get uh, so in Punjab, no, they can't afford books like these. This beautiful books, right? They're right. very expensive. So we subsidize them for normal people. We give them for free in uh, government see. schools, and many schools don't have libraries. So we, the first to create libraries there by giving donating our books there. Oh wow! And okay. enough copies so kids can take them home and read them with their parents and children and bring them back so uh, so we are doing that we yeah reached out to thousands of schools in punjab so people is that part now, is that only in Not, punjab and in india or are you also does, are you also doing this in pakistan or um so in pakistan <laughs> uh, we uh, when i've been to pakistan three times by now i get invited there a lot to speak about the Punjabi language, uh, yeah, because I'm probably the only one they think can think of or they know of <laughs> uh, <laughs> is doing something to connect next generation globally to the Punjabi language. Right. So I'm not saying there are not wonderful authors of Punjabi language in Punjab. There are way more beautiful. In fact, I just retell the stories. I mean, people are creating beautiful original content out there. I see. So. Yeah, but their reach is not global. The so my reach is everywhere. So um, uh, so I've been invited there a lot, and I've taken my books there. The uh, the Sanja Punjab Chap, the Undivided Punjab edition. Have you seen that? No. It's in Gurmukhi, Shamukhi, and English. So oh, wow. so the kids in Pakistan can read, can read Punjabi yeah. language as well because they don't relate <laughs> with Gurmukhi. In fact, yeah. they don't know what Gurmukhi is. They think it's Hindi. Yeah, yeah. It's there's so much division between the two countries that border the seventy five years has created so much rift, um, and we are trying to. I'm trying to. I'm one of the people who are trying to bridge that. And yeah, on 
my uh, undivided Punjab edition is uh, offering towards that is where children see uh, undivided Punjab's map and they see the five lang- uh, five rivers in there, not yeah. div- two rivers here and three rivers there. They see yeah, the five I mean, rivers the together. Whole point is Punjab. <laughs> Punjab, <laughs> yeah. Be. They see the real Punjab. <laughs> yeah. They see the names of the dialects that we talked about written there yeah. and which area speaks which dialect. And they see um, their, their, their kaidas that help them translate from Gurmukhi to Shamukhi and vice versa. Yeah, so if I a see. kid is ambitious, they can learn Shamukhi from there. And they are yeah. learning. A lot of people from West Punjab have learned Gurmukhi from my book. Oh, wow. And they are now taking my books to uh, do storytelling sessions in West Punjab in Pakistan. Yeah. In schools. Just like we do the schools here, there are people who are doing the school storytelling and giving books in, the, uh, in uh, West Punjab as well. Not as much because we don't have the books printed there. So do it's ever, very hard to import books there. Yeah. Do you ever face any resistance or any um, negative? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what, what, what are those things that people are resisting or what are those negative points that people are trying to make against this? Because I, 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 I guess I don't really understand why any of this would be a problem. Even the map of undivided Punjab just bothers a lot of people. Oh, really? And mostly in West Punjab. Um, when I when my book was launched, there Lums University in uh, Lahore, Lahore University of Management Sciences, is a very good university, and they had their first literary conference for the Punjabi language, and yeah. they invited me to launch the book there. And there were these scholars and intellectuals in the launch. Um, and one of them said that um, all good, uh, noble idea, but good luck with having any publisher publish this book in here, in Punjab, in, in Pakistani Punjab. And I, I was like, why? It's so benign. There's no religious yeah. propaganda. There's, it's about flora and fauna and love. And, uh, and he said, it's the map. Because... They would think you're trying to undo Pakistan. You're challenging Pakistan's right, boundaries right, and I notions see. of Pakistan. I'd, and uh, I was like, so India, Indians could think the same. And, uh, and Right, you're uh, actually ignoring Pakistan and India and just saying Punjab. This Punjab, is Punjab. There was, there was Punjab <laughs> and there is Punjab. And mm. Punjab is beyond those borders. And mm. Punjab is everywhere. Punjab is where Punjabis live. You know, it's can, in Australia be, and US. But that can be seen as a threat because, I mean, Pakistan is a, a Muslim country, mm-hmm. right? And you're essentially saying your border shouldn't exist, meaning you mm-hmm. should not have... That, that's mm-hmm. how, I'm not saying that's what you're saying. That's how they're yeah. interpreting it. That's how they're interpreting it. I see. So that's and a, um, so there was a problem and he was right. Three times I've been to... And I, they oh love my, my books. When I speak, there are lines of people, please give us our books. We don't have Punjabi books for children. But how many books can I carry? It's like, have some publisher publish it. Have a printer publish it in Pakistan. Yeah. I've begged to universities, to individuals, to book printers. Nobody wants to dare to do that. Wow. And, it's, uh, and then the second resistance, second thing that broke my heart is like people said to my face, if you can remove Gurmukhi from there, we could consider, just let it be in Shamukhi. Really? And I'm like, that's the whole point, is for our kids to see that Punjabi language can be written in these two beautiful scripts. Right. And it is, these are two sisters. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to change the format of that book. That oh. book is what it is, and it's meant for a reason. So, But so again, it has, it's because they're identifying that as Indian. Yeah. See, that's the thing. And they, that, that, that Punjabi nationalism has not uh, taken right. place in, a, it, it exists in East Punjab mm. because we come from there, you know, yeah. thrown away. So we still have that notion of Punjab. Right. There, I, I wouldn't say there are people who love Punjab and who have national, um, who are Punjabi nationalists in West Punjab. There are, but they are very few and far in between. Yeah. Very few. And, and in 75 years, their narrative has changed Urdu and Pakistan and Islam. I mean, these are the three things they obsess about. And they think everything Which else is... Which is what India wants. That's what India, India wants exactly. to do on their side. They Hindu, want to, they Hindi, want, yeah. Hindustan. 
Yeah. And they are Pakistan, Urdu, and Islam. And the more they do that, the more they're going to fight yeah. with each other. And then so we are stuck in the middle again. We are stuck in the middle with uh, dreaming about this Punjab, borderless Punjab, yeah. land of our forefathers, our forlorn land, you know. Yeah. So, but... You know, the, I, I see there's uh, open-mindedness in the new generation. Hmm. I've gone yeah. to universities. 2019, Guru Nanak Sahib's 550th birth yeah. anniversary, I was invited to speak in nine universities in Lahore. That's awesome. Yeah. So I spoke in 14 days, I spoke at nine universities. <laughs> wow. And the young generation is so awesome. They were so open. I was received with such an open heart. And they wanted to speak in Punjabi. They wanted my books. And they were like, yes, but they, they, they are realizing that they've been robbed of this yeah. uh, identity. And, they're, uh, and I think uh, there's just more efforts needed and people can come together. Yes. And, and it would act as a bridge to, for peace. Like Kirtarpur Corridor has acted as a bridge to peace. Yeah. I mean, so many beautiful stories coming out of there. And... Uh, I think of my work as a corridor too, you know, opening minds and hearts. Yeah. It's and, a soft speaking, corridor. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Kirtarpur, you're also involved in like um, maintaining the the landscape or something you know, with, with Kirtarpur because you're trying to avoid a, too much modernization in the birthplace yes. of Guru Nanak Dev, right? Yes. So I, uh, in 2000. 18 I my, was my first trip to Pakistan and the last day I visited Kartarpur and that's mm. where the corridor hadn't been an announced yeah and I think it was the same old Kartarpur that we've seen in pictures when mm. I first went there it looked like a peace dove with arms open in green mm. fields welcoming you yeah and when you go there there's nothing else but the mitti and the fields where Babaji mm. would have plowed his, you know, yeah. be, um, tell, or, yeah, till, what is Harl called field. in Punjabi? Yeah. Plow. yeah, you would tilt the so, field. In English. So yeah. where he, if his hands and feet would have touched that soil and dirt. And actually you could feel the four hours we were there, Angit Singh was with me. The four of, the, the two of us, we were crying the whole time. Our yeah. eyes were moist, and uh, the first thing I went and just touched that soil and put my forehead, and it was just mm. an uh, experience that I can never forget, and he can never forget too. And uh, and when I came back, I brought some mitti with me, and uh, was shortly after the announcement came of Kartarpur corridor, and along with the corridor, corridor make, made us happy because that's what the ardas we do is, na, jag, which day, yeah, Guru yeah. Tam, na, ona the yeah. Kulle Darshan Di Dar Di Ardas Kar De Apa. So corridor made us so happy and I was like, oh, the ardas is coming true. But then I saw the plants and I was like, oh, <laughs> no, they shouldn't do, be doing this because Kartarpur is not only a Gurdwara. It's not, it's a Parampumi of Guru Nanak Sahib. Whatever he preached, he decided to put it in action and to mm. teach by example. 18 years of his life were spent there. And he had squatted out the place in his second or third Udasi itself that he was mm. going to return back. Now, he had 18,000 acres to his name in Nantana Sahib. He comes, chooses this place for a reason. And, and I, I've written papers about Wait, it. Did you say 18,000 acres? Yeah, in, in Nantana Sahib. Oh, wow. I had Nankana no idea. Nankana Sahib belongs to Guru Nanak, pretty much all of it, but the money from it is going to the ETB uh, uh, evacuate trust property. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We are, our assets are so many in Pakistan right now that they, if they put those assets to work towards preserving and maintaining our heritage there, we would have the best heritage preserved, but it's, there's so much corruption. There's yeah, I had happening. actually heard on somebody else's podcast. Um, that they were when they there when they went there um, during that 550 year anniversary, mm -hmm. um, they were seeing that uh, everything was like renovated and painted and new. And then they came to this back room that hadn't been touched yet, mm -hmm. but they were storing all the construction supplies in this back room. And when they walked in there and they looked and they saw the, all the original architecture, frescoes and, the original, and the frescoes, and they were like, "Oh my God, they are." Mind ruining, blowing. Yeah, ruining everything. 
They are ruining yeah. everything. I I was right now two months ago. I was in Pakistan again, and I went to Dera Sahib, which is one of the gurdwaras that they say you know main gurdwaras that when you go right. to Pakistan you're getting given a tour, of, and it's being completely destroyed. They are yeah. slamming wow. khandas everywhere. They're yeah. whitewashing the yeah. frescoes over. The frescoes are falling apart. The everything is falling apart. And you guess guess who's doing it? Our babas from East yeah. Punjab. Yeah, All, they they babas, invite they... them. So they are so smart. I mean, this whole nexus is so smart. They that, that's the way of they're making their money. I, they're gonna cancel my visit to Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but I, in general, very, we know we know this that the Sant Baba system it works very much like a mafia system. <laughs> They're connected; favors are being done, and money, and it's all about where the money's going to flow, and then who are you going to support in elections? But, all the, but those babas are not making any money off for their own. They live very simple life, and I talk got to talk to a baba. Okay, and so they it is just plain ignorance, and they are being used. Oh, okay. There is no system. It's uh, we can't blame anybody there. It's uh, we can call it a mafia, but it is really not. Uh, the the heritage destruction is because of stupidity. Oh, it's ignorance, and it's not the right people not taking charge. There is no representation for the six. Uh, there is no architecture body for six. There okay. is no preservation body for the six. That's international. There is nobody to raise the voice. So guess who raised the voice for Kartarpur for the fields of Babaji? It's this poor Gurmeet Kaur sitting, doing her books and raising her ch child. And I, ra I wrote a petition and I wrote letters yeah. to every government functionary in the Pakistan government. And I'm spending money, sp sending them letters and uh, formulating a petition, making videos and asking people and going to the Gurdwaras and asking them to sign this petition. And spending my year on Kartarpur Sahib so that we can preserve Babaji's fields. And what we could get out of it is a promise to preserve 42 acres, which they have not, because I went and saw they've planted vegetation over or crops over five or six acres. And they oh. lied. They promised and they lied. But then there's nobody following up and there's nobody in the government change there. And, you know, so somebody, there has to be an organization that does that. One, right. it's a, it is not one person's job, and I've been pleading people, can you not do this? You know, I, I can't do this. But who, who, who could that be? Like, are you talking about like some existing organization that might be able to step in and do this? Or do you think something needs to be created? Something needs to be created, and something needs to be hmm. powerful and international and strong. And they need to uh, document our historical Gurdwaras, and not only Gurdwaras, and Maharaja Ranjit. I went to uh, Gujramala. Maharaja mm. Ranjit Singh Saveli is totally occupied. His father's tomb is totally falling apart and they are just waiting for it to fall apart completely so the encroachers can take over that place. It's a very expensive piece of land. Right, right. And um, so, uh, so there has to be an international body that can keep... Now, Pakistan has 90% of our, or I would say 75% of our um, heritage there, you know. And, um, it, but nobody, the Sikhs in Pakistan have no position to speak up for it. They are so okay. marginalized, they are so suppressed, they are so uneducated, and they, they can't speak for their rights. They are afraid. And um, so it has to be an international. Pakistan wants international tourism, it wants Sikhs to come, and they are very welcome of us. They love yeah, us that's, there. A, that's the impression I got. Like the whole premise this uh, Kirtarpur corridor was that they are welcoming and opening and creating they are. this access. There is right? no doubt about it. The, norm, right. the people are just so loving. I feel like I've come to, uh, you know, PK uh, when yeah. I go to Pakistan. It's right. like I get pampered. People right. love me there. They're just, yeah. there are some, you know, like or, uh, people who heard me like saying yeah. throw gurmukhi out of it and you know yeah 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 <laughs> and they're uh, but the, the, their intention intentions are not bad either right they're they're thinking how best to take punjabi so that it's like you know it doesn't create any political uh, issues so yeah. um so, but i get treated so nicely and everybody says the same so people's hearts are good 
but it's the corruption it's the the government yeah, it's, it's, it's the yeah it's the way things are the that, way things yeah. are it's like yeah. the mil- it's ruled by the military and military wants more land for itself so their families mm. can have elite homes and you know elite, elite lifestyle where's this land coming from i see <laughs> so he, did you know maharaja ranjit singh assigned 100 to 300 to 400 whatever acres 100 plus acres to every gurdwara every historical gurdwara yeah i did not know that yeah so all that land is encroached and all that land is going to D- dha i think it's their defense housing authority <clears throat> that's and interesting because so, so how is that how is that uh, those acreages how are they assigned because you said like eighteen thousand acres and uh Guru Nanak or Guru Nan- in Guru Nanak's name yeah yeah, yeah but so because I, 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 I know nothing. So now know everything is here. under. I don't know real estate there. Is there a deed? Is there a deed? The recorded deed somewhere? Yeah. Or yeah. Is we have docu- a patwar system in Punjab. Patwar okay, system what is, what is, is. What uh, is that? Uh, so, um, you know how uh, the houses or the deeds are done here, the, the department that the, does the deeds? It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, patwar, so like here, Patwari yeah, is the person who used to do the deeds of a village, of a. Okay. Pargana of a subdivision, they there used to be patwaris who would do that. Right. It's Those like rec- the um it's like the county records. County records. The records yeah. are still there. Okay. They have a very good uh so in they, fact that they, there's no legal ca- then how do they le- legally encroach? You're saying that they're waiting. It's illegal. What happened is after partition, uh, hmm. many years after partition, I think in fifties or sixty sixties, evacuee property trust board. Um that organization came into existence it's called okaf board in Punjab, okay. punjabi so wakaf or okaf board and so there is a muslim okaf board and there is a hindu okaf board and we come under hindu okaf board which is mm. you know uh, yeah. the hindus and the sikhs that had left pakistan so they all these properties came under that government organization called the okaf. i see by the time many had been encroached upon already uh, because you know before a cough board came into existence but still there the deeds were transferred to the, 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 the they have the copies of the deeds right so a cough okay. board knows and they don't make things public but our history books tell us right maharaja ranjit yeah. singh everything is documented about maharaja ranjit yeah. singh what he did Kithe, like he made this baradaris that was his signatures he made he gave lots of grants to not only gurdwaras the mosques the temples right. and they were Built in the most beautiful architecture you can imagine. Yeah. And he was such an art lover. And um, every Gurdwara had a school associated with it. Mm. Farming associated. It was self-sustaining communities around Gurdwaras. Yeah, All of that amazing. is in the deeds there. So they know. Now what is, they, to make money, they just, uh, either people have encroached and they give them money underhandedly or they rent those shops and there there's shops now and homes now they rent this and the rents go to so on papers they would give a shop out for thousand dollars thousand rupees a month mm. but in reality they are getting like fifty thousand a month so who's wow. getting that money the corrupt yeah. officers so yeah it's a huge money making thing now the gurdwaras that we are destroying our babas are going and destroying there also makes money for them because okay. they go and uh, say, oh, this is falling apart. Oh, right. This Baradar is falling apart. This uh, Gurdwara needs more space because Sangat is coming. We need more rooms. They're going to destroy the old. Maharaja Ranjit Singh's times, that's not that old, right. but it's so beautiful. They destroy that. And now they're buying all these materials. So now they are doing tenders to buy more materials. So who's making money in that? Yeah, so buying essentially, and procuring materials and stuff. Yeah, so essentially what you're saying is, if I have a construction company mm-hmm. um, and I can say, make the argument that, hey, this building is falling apart, mm-hmm. hire me. I'm mm-hmm. going to bring brand new materials. I'm going to bring mm-hmm. all my workers. We're going to mm-hmm. work on this, you know, three months or whatever, and we're going to make it beautiful again. But I can charge money. Mm-hmm. To, I can make extra money getting the materials. I can force my labor to work cheaper. And then mm-hmm. as the mm-hmm. owner of this company, I have, and I have other deals with people I end up making a lot of money just going around doing that kind of thing. It's not just and and what do you do so you don't yeah and what and you don't want to offend the six so you put the babas there as the face of yeah, it yeah I see so babas think they are doing 
a favor. They're making rooms yeah. for Sangat. Sangat is sleeping on the floor when they're going during Vasakhi. And they were the, the three times that Sangat goes from India to Pakistan. Just three times. Rest of the time, the border is closed for them. I see. It's the Gurpurab in November. It's the Vasakhi in April. And it's Maharaja Ranjit Singh's Bursi that's happening right now. Oh, so there are three times that they go. And then, of course, the Gurdwaras don't have rooms for them. And they, now they have excuse that Sangat comes and people are sleeping on the floor. So we need thousand rooms in Ankana Sahib. But Sangat, when I went there, the rooms, there was nobody there. There was not even a ghost there. <laughs> it was all empty because there's nobody. Only like people from US or Canada or you know, they yeah. are going all the time. Yeah, so, so this, this is bringing a lot of tourism. This is bringing so a lot of... So that's why I think the, the heritage destruction is because of stupidity, not because yeah. of... Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's not that they're being um, intentional about it. They're, they're doing it with... Our a, people maybe, are not being intentional yeah, about yeah. it. Now, they're, uh, they're, those whatever, people they're, there yeah. is the financial thing driving yeah. them. For them, it's the money. But like now, the people now that are supporting... what they can do is like we can still give them the money, but hmm. we can do it properly. Yeah. So our, yeah, that's our the babas, key. If the, yeah, that's the key. Our babas, they, they need to be, because Sangat the paisa the Sangat dai ja right. England, the Sangat gives tons mm -hmm. of money to the babas, you know. Yeah. Because they are not investing. It, evacuate pro, 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 uh, property tra, transport is not investing there. Money. Right. They're like, you do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Come on, Jiji. Yeah, right. So, paisa is going to go. But paisa is going to go. It's going to go. And your argument is, we should be preserving and restoring, not destroying and building new and expanding new There's, cheap stuff it's yeah, really cheap, cheap stuff, stuff. Too. yeah yeah it's gonna go, again in 20 years it's gonna need construction again mm. the cycle is gonna go on so basically mm. it's our limited resources of whatever limited population we have going right. in gurdwaras where it should be going for education and uplifting our pakistani brothers and sisters there mm. they i mean I made the statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you're saying. I mean, again, going back to Gurdwaras have schools attached to them. Gurdwaras have farming attached to them. And not only could the Gurdwara be an example, then the Gurdwara can also teach others how to do the same thing. And for right? Kartarpur, and, that was my intention is Kartarpur mm. is our first taksal. Mm -hmm. It's taksal is the main, yeah, uh, Coins are coming out, beautiful coins. Corn are out there, Guru Angad Sahib Uthwari. Hana? Gurmukhi Utho Nikal Riyya, Hana? Utho Satta Balwanda Arene, Chede Ki Guru Arjan Sahib Dera Babi or Kirtaniya Rai. Utho Pai Shahzada or Apna Una De Pai Mardana, a Sussex School of Musicology. First Taram Saal hai, first Gurdwara hai, Sada, first Tak Saal hai. But it's a school of Sikh ethos. It's a university. Mm. I mean, Kartarpur did the Enni Mahatta Honi Chaidia or no Usitra Uthe Babajina Pre Hathi Kiti Kirt Kitia Uthe Hindu on the Muslim on the Sanyasi on the Jogi on the Nar on the Nari and the Orat Mard. Everybody comes and becomes Guru Sikh and they love each other and they help each other and uplift each other. And right. that's the community that, you know, modern day, you know, you're making this sustainable community, agricultural communities, yeah, that's, right? Yeah, that's the trend now. Yeah. That's a trend now. And Barama. They were doing Guru, it, yeah. Guru Sahib wrote Barama there. That means he was surrounded by beautiful flora and fauna that's inspired Barama, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so we should be reconstructing uh, Kartarpur in that lines. And that was my petition to the government. Unfortunately, the army had made all its plans and there was a timeline they were going to open the corridor and they executed and ignored me and maligned my petition. But uh, thankfully, Navjot Singh Sidhu, the politician from India, yeah. he read my work and he came to aid and he uh, raised it up with Imran Khan. And that's how they... Uh, so I think things worked. Yeah. Things, uh, they had already done a lot of damage, but they now know that Sikhs would like to preserve their Gurdwaras. Right. They now know that. So they, they don't blindly go about doing anything like that anymore. So, but, but yeah, we need I, a I body. Like we're, we're, we're very short-sighted. My uh, last episode I did last week with uh, Samip Singh um, on the Fly Amritsar Initiative. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, 
And we talked about that. And he, it was eye opening for me too, because I never really thought about it that, you know, we know Amritsar is a city established by the Guru, by Guru Ram Das. Guru Ram Das Ji. Right. But we never thought about this was a project that the Guru started that is mm-hmm. the responsibility of Sikhpanth to grow it and maintain mm-hmm. it. And putting a, uh, having a functioning international airport is a requirement of a productive city when mm-hmm. you look at the entire world. It totally changed my perspective, you know, that um, you got you to gotta start thinking about the Guru's projects outside of Gurbani. I mean, Gurbani is the ultimate. We have Guru mm-hmm. Granth Sahib. The Gurus gave us this spiritual path. But the Gurus also lived um, a... a a different path, the 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 political, socio political path. Exactly, and uh, the amazing uh, the way <clears throat> Guru Ramdas designed Amritsar with all the markets around mm, it, the trade yes. around it. I think right. fifty two markets uh, separate for loon and like it was a on the Silk Road trading market over there. Yeah. You know, different for different things, and you can see some of the remnants there. But now uh, they're destroying all of that too. Yeah, you know, with yeah, the, we're, we're not taking care of it. And we are not taking care of yeah. it. And where do all these models come from is Kartarpur. So Guru Nanak establishes mm. Kartarpur, sends Guru Angad. He doesn't say Guru Angad, ask Guru Angad to stay there. He says, go to Kadur oh. Sahib. Yeah. You know, so he establishes Kadur Sahib and then Goindwal Sahib, Guru Amar Das Sahib. And yeah. then Ram Das, Chak Ram Daspur. So these are the cities yeah. that are being designed on the model of Kartarpur, replicated by each guru has a, a new city designed. I mean, it's amazing yeah. to think about that. If you were to tell somebody today, hey, I want you to go to this place over here and establish a city. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Most, of, yeah. most people would be, that's impossible. You can't do that. And, and a city based on values, yeah, ethos, and uh, <laughs> a self-sustaining yeah. community. A thriving community, which is around spiritual values. I mean, it's, well, even it's, even when you look at uh, Guru Gobind Singh's darbar, um, he had he invited all these uh, intellectuals and poets, and they were writing about politics, e- economics. They were writing about music. They were yes. writing about art. They're writing. They were writing about all these things because the common person didn't have access to information, right? The uh, elites held the information. They're the ones that edu- were educated. They're the ones that knew how to do political discourse. They're the ones that knew, um, you know, what is, uh, what are the rules of military strategy and stuff. But Guru Gobind Singh was giving it to everybody. He said, I'm going to get this information. I'm going to give it to everybody because, now, if I put it, frame it the way we're talking now, because if you think about it, if you're going to establish cities that are based on those ethos mm. and those values have you have to have the information is- yeah the average person needs to be educated in that way so it's really really brilliant when you think about it from that perspective this is just another aspect that the gurus were genius yeah. that we don't <laughs> recognize you know and, yeah. and hearing you even talk about uh the work and some of the challenges and and a little bit depressing depressing that to hear you know things that i had no idea uh some of these things were still like in Guru's name and things like that. And, you know, yeah. to hear that makes me feel, yeah, well, that's we have a Pakistan, responsibility. But what are we doing in India is oh, yeah, India really is, bad. It, it, Actually, it's worse, worse I would say, yeah. because Pakistan is, uh, so, some of our heritage is untouched. Mm. Like when I went to Gujramala, there are so, so many Gurdwaras still standing there. And uh, the buildings are untouched because uh, some of them are not occupied. They're deserted and if even they are occupied you know they haven't changed the face of it and stuff right in india everything is like in the hands of the baba so destroy the old and build the new, build new you know yeah so i mean where is the madan of anandpur sahib where guru sahib khalsa te jad vasakhi te sarjana hai khalsa di te everybody mm. gathered there mm. shouldn't that grounds shouldn't those grounds have been left yeah wouldn't you have had the feeling when you went there his guru was standing here and they, he is yeah. the congregation. And we build things on top of, you know, precious. The heritage is not only in the frescoes and the building, it's also in the fields, in the, in the grounds, in the trees. There mm, are half the gurdwaras are named after trees and those trees are not there. 
Ba bedi beri, but where's the beri? Imli Sab Gurdwara in the city called Indore I grew up is yeah. named off, uh, of Gurnanak was there twice. Imli the Rukh si gaute. Where mm. is that Rukh drag? It's not there. It's been cut. So mm. that's it's it's the stupidity that destroys the heritage. Yeah. So Benji, um, I really appreciate you coming on today. You gave us a lot of information. I learned a lot today. I really, really thank you for educating me on all these issues because, again, we don't hear about it. Um, I, I know I, a lot of your work is in Punjabi and you're really going a lot on more on Punjabi it's, channels. It's bilingual. Everything I do is dual language because I want yeah. our kids to learn Punjabi because uh, they, they, don't know, they know English language well so they can, you know, yeah, uh, no, I, I, meant more like English. Pro- I meant more the promotional work you've been doing. I know you go on a lot of Punjabi channels. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. A, a lot of us don't have acts. We, we, we're not paying attention. We're not listening to Punjabi news shows or radio yeah, shows. So we're not hearing true. these things. And I'm that's hoping true. that my audience, because I, I think a lot of my audience is, is similar to me. We are passionate about Sikhi. We are passionate about teaching our kids Punjabi and Sikhi and, and we, we want a better future. We want to mm-hmm. fix these things that are, are you know, if, they, if it was even in America, somebody said, um, oh yeah, you know, um, that, that used to be where the White House was. <laughs> People would feel sad, right? Like, oh no, what happened? Yeah. So th- th- that feeling of wanting to preserve, I think yeah. a lot of my audience, they're probably similar to me. They're not Hearing, we're not even aware. We're not aware how bad it is because we don't listen to that news. The fact that you came on today and you were able to educate us and, and reach people, I'm hoping that somebody listening, either they can help support your efforts somehow, or maybe they have talents and, and knowledge that they can bring to, the, to, to help in this kind of work, preserving and, and taking care of historical yeah. areas. And the other thing is, um, I really, really hope my listeners will buy your books. It, they are invaluable. It's a great resource for our children, but also for us. We think we're so smart, like we know, oh, I know enough. I, I have the. You, we don't. When you read the details and you understand the connections, like even even in the just one thing called book, you start with you know the historical connection with my pago, like mm-hmm. it's. It's so connected to our guru history. It's it's a direct line. It you know, it's not it's not it makes it feel like, you know, it's easy sometimes to think, oh, that was a long time ago, people a long time ago that I'm not connected to. But then when you think how direct that line actually is, how close these villages are, how these people got together and worked together, when you think about that, it's really amazing. Because that brings it to the present, that f- connects you in the present day. That mm-hmm. I and feel Baba Banda Singh Bahadur, uh, they're one of their forefathers fighting in, alongside yeah. of Baba Banda Singh Bahadur. Can you talk a little bit about, um, do you, ha- you have a new book that's coming out and what is it about and when can we expect it? So um, you have all my series, um, fascinat- Fascinating Folk Tales of Punjab. The, yeah, the, the, all the stories. Mm-hmm. Those, so yeah, I have yeah. uh, eight books in that, and then okay. the ninth one is the uh, <clears throat> Undivided Punjab edition. Okay. So I'm uh, continuing the series. So the next one is the ninth in the series of the un- uh, fascinating folk tales of Punjab, okay. and it's a it's a wonderful book. It's uh, the first time uh, I'm taking these human uh, folk stories but giving them names. So I'm making characters that are typical Punjabi characters. Okay. And, uh, and uh, it's so, they are folk stories about human beings now. So it's more like 18th century Punjab that I'm showing. Okay. And you can imagine if I'm showing 18th century Punjab and human stories with, by way of two characters, uh, Thaya and Thai, <clears throat> which is like uncle and aunt. Yeah. I'm showing a lot of um, uh, the way of living of Punjab of 18th century in it. So via the artwork and via the text. Um, And these words, 
you know, Gurbani is full of cultural connotations and yes. cultural words, right? Yeah. So Baba Fariji uses the word kunna, but do our kids know what a kunna is? No. There is a word called ota, but what is an ota actually in a kitchen? Then there is uh, things like that. So there's chulla mm. and there's charkha and there is khaddi and yeah. there is all of these things are painted. And as well as there is a visual dictionary at the end of the book. And oh, there's excellent. a reference in Gurbani where it shows, appears in Gurbani. That's so, so that's the book I'm working on. And it's a lot of work. So to incorporate, in, incorporate those elements in the story, because the story is the main thing that the kids think that they were reading the story, but then they're yeah, learning they're about learning. all these things, Gurbani yeah. words. Yeah. That's and, when, when can we expect that? When, when are... um, I think by Gurpurab, I should be ready by November. Oh, um, okay. So this is the book I've been working for five, six years. And the stories are amazing too. They're very uplifting. They're very uh, jovial. The character yeah. is uh, somebody who can laugh on himself as well as laugh at the world. And, uh, and a very simple character, a farmer and his wife. And uh, so these are farmer and his wife tales, but yeah. they are Punjab based on Punjabi folklore. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited about this book. And the artist who's painted them um is from punjab he's a young kid and he these are all hand painted so oh wow uh, with That's acrylic great. on paper it's no not digital work. and yeah. uh, like 200 artifacts from punjab kids are going to learn about Excellent. and not only artifacts it's also the muhavre you know the idioms and yeah. adages yeah. proverbs in punjabi yeah. and uh, so they, those are incorporated and there's a dictionary of those at the end yeah. they're going to learn really good I punjabi have you seen uh, Jawala Singh's work on the proverbs? He has like 52 oh. proverbs of Punjab or something oh. like that. Punjabi he, proverbs. I, I have had a glimpse, yeah. Yeah. So mine's going to have at least 200. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mahabra and proverbs. That's so, awesome. So, so it's, it's a good work to introduce, but I work yeah. with all these. I don't know where my books are right now. Uh, no, but I, I think being a, able to present yeah. it in a way that's going to be entertaining for children and then even for yeah. people like me we're gonna we're yeah. gonna learn from it so i yeah. think that's i think yeah. that's really amazing work yeah no i haven't read the book yet but i know that they were england right uh no that i think book? he's i think he's from uh, uh he's originally from like vancouver oh okay but uh he's now wasn't he's there a, some another book that came out of england on proverbs there of, might be i i don't know okay so maybe the, i'm confusing the two uh, yeah. I should look into this one. So there's yeah. 52 proverbs. Yeah, yeah, 52 proverbs. I think that's the. And they are like. I hope I'm getting that correct. I, I should verify. But okay. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. But uh, no, but Banji, thank you so much for coming on today and telling us about all the work and discussing your books and projects. Um, you're doing amazing work. Uh, and and I'm sure a lot you. of people listening, they're gonna appreciate the fact that you were able to come on here and and explain to us in English the work that you're doing, um, which is going to be different. Cause like I said, I know people are, uh, you're being able to, you're getting a chance to talk on Punjabi channels, but, um, I really thought it'd be, cause I follow you on Facebook and I, I've been following some of your work anyway. And I knew that it would be impactful for people to hear, you know, your story, what it took and you know, how we got to where we are today and continued success. I hope the best. And I really look forward to your next book. Thank you. Thank okay. you for having me and giving me the opportunity. It was wonderful to learn about what you did and your journey as well. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much. Okay, very good. Okay, okay. Wai Gurdjie Ka Khalsa. Wai Gurdjie Ka Khalsa. Wai Gurdjie Ka Khalsa.